What we don't talk about with anxiety and depression is a lot of prescription medications affect your sexual desires and your libido and you don't want to have sex anymore. So guess what? When you're in your 20s and your 30s, it's a big deal. Not to say that for everybody else it's not either, but in your 20s and 30s, people stop using their prescription medications even though it was helping because their they sex life stops. Yeah. And because that's an important part of our personal relationships and it's a part of that discussion. And so, you know, if your sex life is going to stop, then why would you take something that's going to make you feel better but not want to have sex? So one of the things that we see in terms of cannabis and really specifically with THC is that it's really good for people's sex life. <laughs> and THC? T this is this is that evil stepsister, right? The evil twin yeah. sister. Now it, we're getting somewhere. That, that's Let's, right. We're getting to the good stuff. So that's Pay where, attention, guys. <laughs> especially if you're not teasing. Um, so so that's, where, <laughs> that's where we see. And the best part, I actually think, is this is the first time that we're talking about sex for women. So we have a lot of products out there in the pharmaceutical world, Viagra for men, yeah. we don't have any for women. And guess what? You're actually not technically supposed to prescribe Viagra for women because it hasn't been tested on women. Because women's sexual drive is not, or sexual capacity or orgasms are not a part of the medical conversation. Oh God, Right. Another. Right, another, right, another. And like we see this kind of popping up. That, that's right, the term hysteria, right, all of these things. I think um, John Oliver did a segment the other night about how um, you would go to the doctor's office and one of the treatments for hysteria was to have sex with the doctor. Um, what a good, that's a great practice. Right, <laughs> Right. exactly, that's right. So then remove your ovaries and go into menopause. Oh, what a job that right. guy had. Right, exactly. like, and like there are so many conversations to be had around that. <laughs> So many, so we can. Oh, we'll do a whole other podcast on that one. And he screens his patients for who he can treat and who right. he can't treat because he can only see forty a day. Right, that's right. <laughs> and then he goes out like so after sixties. It's good, 60s, for, it's he's good retiring. for sex, is what you're saying. Right, so it's good, and it's good for female sex and Females. female libido just as much it is for men. And one of the th ways that the industry is actually getting into this is that they are designing things specifically for female sex. And one of the ways we were talking about was they, they have a spray now that you can spray directly on your clitoral area to improve and enhance your sexual orgasm for women. And one is, you know, something another person brought up to me was, well, do you have to disclose this to your partner? I said, of course you do. Otherwise you're gonna be dosing them. It would be like giving a Mickey, right? Giving something in some a woman's drink. You have to do the same, you know, we gotta be kind to our partner. Wait a minute, it impacts the man? the guy will get it in his system as well. So if your spouse, partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, oh, you'll get what, they'll get high a little bit. Well, th even if they don't get high, let's say they're gonna get a drug test at their work. Oh. All of a sudden oh, they hello. test positive. It's the contact. Right. Contact high. It's contact and it's not Second just contact, smoke. it's mucosal contact, which makes it even stronger. Wow, can you imagine that poor son of a bitch? 